If you're a player who hits high shots, weak shots, and tends to flare the shot out to the right, so slices, pushes, basically an open face at impact or added dynamic loft, there can be lots of reasons for that. Weak grips, uh, different forearm supination, pronation rates in backswing and downswing, but you don't have to worry about that because here we're talking purely about wrist extension or flexion. So this player, if I draw a, a line on his forearm and then back of the lead wrist, you can see his, his wrist is in an extended or cupped position there. And that tends to open the face for most people. If I give 100 golfers that wrist position, they're either going to flare it out right, or some better players might find a lot of supination at the bottom, uh, forearm roll basically, and they get a square shot, but it's really high spin loft shots. So there's not a lot of compression on it. So uh, there are pros who do that, but usually they combine that lead wrist flexion at the top with much stronger grips. So if you are not hitting it to the right, you know, if you're hitting pretty square shots, then this is irrelevant for you. But for all of those who are hitting high, weak shots or shots to the right, this is really important. Now, some players will even, from that position, some good players will actually flex the lead wrist on the way down so they recover from it this player doesn't in fact i had him on a hack motion and he actually increases the extension in the wrist on the way down and so he really suffered with high shots and shots to the right as i've said so a good drill or a way I trained this player to feel this differently is a stop and go drill, a stop and bump drill. So basically I swing to the back swing here and then what you do is you just change. You don't have to look at it. I'm looking at it here just to kind of uh, tell you where my intentions and attention are. But you flex the lead wrist so you or bow the lead wrist a little bit more. You don't want to do it too much, you know, you don't want to put your wrist in a position where you could cause injury, but for someone who is extended, then doing that is just going to flatten it out and close the face or square it up earlier. And then from there, you're going to do one, two, three pumps and then hit the shot. So that's actually the drill itself and the the progression or the process that you do to make the change. So again, I'll play that through in real time to show you what it looks like. So when making a change, it can always be, any change really can be pretty difficult, but if you do it in this broken down method, then it can make it a little easier until you can do all of it as one fluid action. So it's kind of broken down at the moment. This is kind of off season work as well. You wouldn't want to do this maybe in a tournament. Certainly you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't do that. You could probably gather a feel in a practice swing, but now it's winter. We can start to make changes to our swing. And like I said, if you are suffering with those open faces this is a really good drill really good exercise to start to ingrain a better club face position through the downswing if you want more drills to not only fix slices and hooks but improve your consistency and control of your direction then check out my program the accuracy plan where i show you how to fix your over the top moves excessively into out swing paths as well as gain greater control of the club face and that's the most important factor when it comes to controlling direction I use skill drills to build motor control and technique exercises to improve the mechanics of your swing. And I even show you how to measure your shot patterns without a launch monitor and how to build strategies around those patterns. So if you want to learn more, click the link in the description.